In high school, my friends and I were messing around with a Ouija board one night. We had done it before and nothing remarkable had ever happened. We usually did it to try and scare each other or our girlfriends. We all thought it was a joke. That night, there was no one else home except the seven of us, and we were all together around the board. One of the girls there wanted to try it. She had never done it before. This time was different. The board misspelled some of the words the same way every time. It gave answers that seemed really historically accurate for our town, things we neither knew nor cared about. Long story short, the spirit claimed it was a 10-year-old boy who had died on the property in the 1800s and was buried there too in an unmarked grave. My friend's house was on a farm on the edge of town. We were all a little freaked out because the board had never been so detailed and consistent. However, we were still skeptical and we were all assuming one of us was trying to scare the rest. Finally, my friend asked if the spirit could do something to prove he was there with us. It went to yes and then spelled out K-N-O-C-K. Then the planchette stopped moving. We just all stared at it silently, and then there was a rap, rap, rap on the window right next to us. The lights were on outside, and there was absolutely no one out there. We never touched that effing board again. Four years ago, I lived in a very large farmhouse that was converted into two apartments. The house was known as the old boy's home. It was used to house boys with behavioral issues, but was closed due to allegations of molestation. Anyway, I was living with my boyfriend and a three-year-old daughter at the time. My bedroom had a large fireplace that had been boarded up and painted over. I decided to push my bed up against it one day while I was rearranging things. It was like a headboard. That night around 1 a.m., I heard a small voice saying, Mom, Mom, Mommy. I had sat up in bed but didn't see anything, so I reached over to my boyfriend, trying to grab down to grab my daughter and put her in our bed. I kept feeling around and I was still hearing the voice, but I couldn't feel her. My boyfriend woke up and turned the bedside lamp on, asking me, What the hell are you doing? I explained that Amelia was trying to get into our bed and I was reaching for her. There was nobody there. My daughter was sound asleep in her room. Then the next night came. Around 1 a.m. again, my dog started to whimper at the door, so my boyfriend got up to take him outside. You know that feeling in a bed when someone lies down next to you? Where the bed pushes in and there is warmth in your back? I felt that, so I assumed my boyfriend had come back to bed. I rolled over, my boyfriend wasn't in the bed, and I felt the fucking bed release pressure. Whatever was lying next to me got up in that second. I moved my bed the next day to the other side of the room, and I never had another incident in the two years I remained in that house. When I was around 16, my rapidly growing family finally moved from the house I had spent my entire life in. As you would expect, we spent a lot of time fondly remembering things we used to do in the house as we were packing everything up. At some point, I decided to go into the downstairs closet with a flashlight and read, something I used to do when I was younger to get some peace and quiet. Now, this is one of those deep closets that goes under the stairs. It went back around eight feet and then had a left turn into a very low, maybe three foot high space. This space was largely occupied by a mountain of old blankets and stuffed animals. Of course, this is the most fluffy spot to sit and read. About an hour in, I shift a little to get comfortable and I hear a low, slow, warped, hoarse voice say, you always make me happy. I flipped my shit, hit my head on the low ceiling and practically broke the door down, getting out. After hyperventilating and explaining to my family why there was no collar left on my face, I went back to see what it was. It was my stuffed little bear from when I was three or four years old that I happened to lean on just right to press his belly. When I pressed his stomach again though, nothing happened. This poor bear I hadn't played with since I was a toddler used the last of its power and its dying breath to tell me I made it happy. You make me happy too, little bear, when you're not making me piss myself. Growing up, my bedroom was the only one that faced the front of the house or street. 
When I was about eight or nine, I woke up to my dad calmly but firmly telling me to get up, go in the bathroom, and shut the door. I was annoyed because I was half asleep, but I listened. Apparently I was more tired than I realized, because I fell asleep on the bathroom floor. The next morning, I asked my mom what happened. She seemed oblivious and confused. I looked at my dad like she was crazy, and I asked him why he had woken me up. He denied doing it. I was becoming frustrated to the point of tears, but I ultimately let it go. Fast forward to college. I was home on one break, and I decided to ask again. I had thought of that night off and on for years, and it still bothered me. This time my dad goes, ha, I was wondering if you even remembered that. It turns out that a lot of houses on our block were being vandalized and robbed all those years ago. Someone had broken into the garage and was inside the house. My room was partially over the garage. My dad heard it happen and quietly got me to safety. The police were called and the guy ran. He was never caught, however, and my parents didn't want a terrified kid on their hands. So for years they pretended like nothing had ever happened. It wasn't supernatural, but it was unsettling, for sure. I live in Eastern Oregon, and my mom lives in Western Oregon. I went to visit her for the summer and she's very outdoorsy, so we decided to take the one hour drive from her city to the coast. We end up at this free campsite at the top of this hill, huge foothills of the coastal mountains, about a 25 minute drive from the top where the campsite is to the bottom where the main road is. And we were the only campers there. We relaxed for the rest of the day, made food, etc. A truck full of men drives up the hill and talks with my mom. I don't know what to say, I wasn't suspicious at the time. And they leave us. Fast forward to the middle of the night. I wake up to find my mom sitting straight up in the tent. I wake easily, so I heard her gasp and it woke me. As soon as she saw I was awake, she put her hand over my mouth because I was starting to ask her what was wrong. It was dead silent. And all of a sudden, you heard footsteps right beside the tent. The little flap that covers the zipper was even moving. Thankfully, my mom has quick wits and said very loudly, Kenny, grab the gun. Kenny is my dad, although that doesn't matter. And mind you, he was not there, just as girls, like I previously said. They left. No harm was done. Thank the Lord for my mama. I was with my little brother home alone when we suddenly heard a creepy voice from the other room saying, Panda, come here, I want to talk to you. We didn't know who or what it was, and immediately ran upstairs. While we were running to our room, we heard someone nearby say, Do you boys think you can run from me? I see everything. At this point, we were terrified, locking the door to our room, grabbing our mini baseball bats, and crying. We were certain we were going to be killed, or eaten by some monster. Then it happened. A loud bang came from the closet, and the monster sprang out. We both screamed. My brother fell, and I threw the bat at nobody but my dad wearing an IT clown mask and laughing hysterically. It turns out he was behind the whole thing. First, he had put all the cordless phones in the house on speaker and said he was leaving to run some errands. Then he proceeded to sneak back into the house, hide in our closet, and scare us. 